a few thoughts on the cacophony, the great cacophony of scanners. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Daniel Boyd, Peter Healy, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. It has been a stellar year for the experience, the craft of taking two-dimensional images, whether they're inside pages or on boxes or anywhere else, turning them into image files and uploading them to the Internet Archive and elsewhere. Perhaps it's locked down from the pandemic and people are actually looking at their to-do piles, or maybe it's just the advent of Discord, where entirely small groups of people can meet larger ones along a very certain discipline and then connect, bridge, and reconnect. In my angel of death, guys, I know Discord is not going to be forever. But for the moment, you have top quality multimedia IRC, and people are taking advantage of it greatly. I'm apparently a bit of a dilettante with only 12 or 13 discords that I'm on, almost all of them dedicated to turning some sort of fandom or archive into a digital one, with tips and tricks and people discussing the best way to do whatever they're doing. And then I'm able to draw connections to discords that I run, where I have a Internet Archive Discord and a Jason Scott Discord. It is absolutely a party that will not go on forever, but I really am enjoying the party while it goes on. Part of my job, well, really the majority of it these days, is mucking through the Internet Archive stables, finding all of the things people have uploaded with very little guidance and doing basically whatever they wanted to do, and then figuring out if we already have sub-collections for it that they can go into. A person will, all on their own, without talking to anybody, suddenly start uploading entire swaths of manuals or menus or flyers, and then I just try to find homes for it besides just sitting in the open collection. Which might as well be called uploads, because... It has the same sort of discordant feel that any upload section of a BBS ever had, where everyone just got to do whatever they wanted. In this modern era, we're blessed with the fact that megabytes, gigabytes, and even terabytes don't bring the Internet Archive to its knees. If somebody contacts me and says, I have a bunch of scans, but I'm sorry to say they're three gigabytes, I have to hold it in to say, well, I think we can find the room. But I know that we are getting in something on the order of between 20 and 40 terabytes a day as things grow and pull in from partners, just folks, and extensive web crawling services that we've been doing for years. A lot of life has truly gone online this year, and along with it, people are being inspired to give us all sorts of digital history. Again, there are these lone wolves completely working on their own with no other guidance, and they're doing very good scans of a whole range, a whole corpus of material that I think they've been thinking about doing for a very long time. Like anybody else who looks over the intake flow valve of an organization, I have my favorite things. But I like to think they're a little bit general and not just focused to specific vintage computing and electronic history. For example, you can't do better by me than uploading a perfectly preserved pulp magazine of the 30s and the 40s. When you have that beautiful full-color cover that was meant to bring people in, followed by crisp clean ads for all sorts of medically and ethically questionable products being presented to you as if each one is a revolution. There are few things I'd rather scroll through more. I don't know if it's a 
wanting to return to a simpler time because by any stretch of the imagination, the early part of the 20th century was not a simpler time. I think it's just being able to know from a vantage point of decades, in some cases a century, how things worked out. So when you see speculation, contemplation, and people wonder, what will life hold? I have the knowledge of what happened. In the discords that I float around in, I see all sorts of people, all of them focused, laser focused in some cases, on taking the best possible digital scan that contemporary technology and their budgets will allow, and then uploading them, among other places, to the archive. For a bunch of them, it is almost the professional grade quality that everybody dreams of doing. They'll take a perfect bound magazine, one where the edge is completely glued together, and they'll use a heat gun to turn it into individual pages. Then they'll scan in each page carefully at a ridiculously high resolution and then go through it with a photo editing program to get rid of any flaws, misalignment, and other aspects that were inevitable in the printing process. In some cases, they'll fix formatting and de-skew the images so what you have in the digital form is many times better than what was on the paper. Other folks take a much more light-handed touch. They'll have a stack of an old fanzine or newsletter that's printed on 11 by 19 sheets of paper that are folded, and they'll just scan it at about 300 or 400 dots per inch, which is okay in the modern era, and then just upload it as is, as a bunch of very large sheets, each one with two out-of-order pages on it. In some cases, I've got tools where I can assist them and make things work better. It's possible for me to fix what the search index would consider a cover, which, I'm sad to say, is not always the case at the archive. <laughs> Let me take a moment just to tell you how that came about. Everything on the Internet Archive is an improvisation of technical prowess and trying to handle a flow of incoming product. In the case of book scanning at the Internet Archive, which began in the early part of the 2000 to 2004 era, the problem was that they were scanning very old books that didn't have a cover. The only thing they had was the dull cloth covers of very old books. The real information as to what you were going to have on the book was on the title page. So, after a bunch of iterations of this, there turned out to be a simple solution. Write a program that, when the images came in and were being processed, take a reasonable guess at whatever the title page is and use that. This worked great until people like me came along and really encouraged the uploading of manuals and magazines and other printed materials that always had a cover. So here we are with the incoming queue mixed between this very old discipline and these brand new items and trying to make the best guess, which is often, much more often, wrong. There are all sorts of these problems coming in. They come from a lack of guidance. When you join the Internet Archive and you're encouraged to upload, you're not given a guide or a set of rules and structures. We don't have a, a program that looks through what you've uploaded that starts yelling at you about changes you have to make or entries that you have to fill out. It just lets you do it. Does this lead to spam? Oh, mighty yes, it does. We get an enormous amount of spam that has to be cleaned up and removed. Uh, hairdressers and plumbers and photography and search engine optimization and mail enhancement products constantly uploading fake video or broken pages trying to get you to move over to a complete third-party site where who knows what awaits you. But it also means that... People who otherwise would feel they didn't have a mandate 
to upload the very precious PDF they have or the bunch of images that they made, just go ahead and do it. And frankly, I'm pretty much of the philosophy that I'd rather have millions of items I had to sort through rather than a few hundred extremely well curated but a tiny peephole of what could have been. One side effect of all of this increased traffic means that things are taking a very long time to process. It used to take something anywhere between 15 minutes and a few hours to process many of these documents, and I'm seeing these numbers extend up to a few hours or a few days to go through. The solution is money and hardware. The programming works, and it's designed to expand. But we tend to keep things pretty close to budget because, obviously, we're in it for the long run. One of the side effects when you see a company that does something extremely quick, they're dumping a lot of money into making that happen. And that's great until you have a downturn or somebody is searching around trying to make this quarter's budget a little less. And then you have a habit of things disappearing completely. The archive has been processing millions and millions of items this year, and it does so at its pace, which seems pretty sustainable, as long as you show some patience. On these related discords, the ones that consist of people scanning and digitizing material and then putting it on the Internet Archive, among other places, I see a very specific set of personality types. There are people for whom they think this is all one perfect go-around. I call them the NASA kids. They're the ones who think that we have one moonshot to turn this item into a digital form. And so every single step has to be done perfectly because it'll never be done again. Scanning in a piece of paper at 1,200 or 2,400 dots per inch, going through each page carefully to make sure the skew stays where it is, to make sure that it's aligned and clear and proper contrast, and then, having done it all, come up with a full description of everything within the contents so that somebody can find it on a metadata search. I love these people but they're very rare, and very few of them last. It is incredibly debilitating work to do this. Burnout is a job hazard. On the other hand, I have seen people take very shoddy steps where they're just happy it's up, but it's clear that the most important aspect, the legibility, is just not there. Hand me sheet after sheet of relatively decently scanned printed materials, and AI and algorithms will do their best with it. They'll be able to read it, to classify it, to indicate what it looks like, and we can generate the metadata from there. But if the images and the text are fuzzy, out of focus, streaked, out of skew, things don't work as well. Make no mistake, I'm impressed when I see that somebody took a piece of printed material, put it on a carpeted floor, and took photo after photo with a camera phone, then uploads that album to the archive as a book. There's something impressive in that. You just gotta hold your chin and say, well, very few people would have completed that way. But I prefer the flatbed, middle of the road, pretty good job that a person can do over and over again, and then carefully put away in a box the originals. People sometimes do the scanning and then think the originals have to be thrown out, and that is not a universal thought, but I've seen it more than once where there's been a mention about a missing page and the person says, well, it's all in the trash and it's over. I can't help you. For these folks, I try to reach in and say, look, after you're done, we'll happily take a mailed box of the originals, just in case, just to have them somewhere, just for the future. 
Because if there's one thing I've learned over the past 30 years, the technology of digital imaging is always improving. We are seeing incredible strides in the size of cameras, in the processing that happens on the other side. And it seems such a shame to choose one marked moment in the spectrum of time as the one that will hold it forever. So that's where we are at this time. People are doing a pretty good job, and hundreds of new items are coming in every day that I would be proud to point my Twitter feed at and to share in the joy of reading them. There are people who I've never met, never communicated with, and I've just enjoyed their work on its face, where they've decided that an old cookbook or a rocketry manual or some sort of VHS tape of a long-forgotten public access show has to go up for the world. And so if I take a screen grab or go in deep and take a small image and turn it into a poster-sized experience, the joy I get to share with others that this even exists is just the kind of modern collaboration that I can get behind. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to Emilio Oliveira, Forrest Fuqua, James Bekoyanu, Mark Pilgrim, Scott McGrady, Scott Roseanne, and Wayne Arthurton, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. Nothing lasts forever. A day may come where the upload tap of the Internet Archive is accompanied by a whole range of filtering and signing up and process that will inevitably take things down a notch, make it harder to do. Everything changes. I'm not aware of anything on the horizon, but I have decades of experience of knowing that nothing continues indefinitely. But until then, in the zest and the wonder, the variety of all of this material coming in, you'll pardon me if I just lie back, smile, and enjoy it.